Hey, welcome back to Matchball Grid. My name's Andre. How's everyone doing? Uh, we just started our GNK. This is round one. We have a 14 player three round GNK. Just let me get set up. Uh, it is currently 7-10. We started a bit behind schedule, but we should be good. I'm playing against David. This is round one. We're technically uh, table one, but that's just luck. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is, so this is Asmari we're playing against. Um, Asmari is likely going to be running uh, some sort of current scarcity resources, so having a current would be pretty good. Uh, we have Pad Tab, which is pretty good against Asmari. We can make it so when we play a card of their calling, we at least get a credit from it. Our opening hand's actually really good. Uh, we have to watch out for IP block, which is almost definitely playing, but we don't have any way around that. But the Sims is actually pretty okay. If they play scarcity, we might be in a bit of a pickle, but opening with Classic, Pad Tab, Gamble is probably good. So I'm a. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see how this goes. Um, this is a 419 neck deck. It's running Anakam. I think this is originally, I saw Tug to Gut playing this. Uh, so I haven't tried this yet. I just net decked it. I'm pretty excited. If you don't know, this is just good stuff. 419 kind of uh, that basic sort of shell. And we're playing against Asmari. 40 card deck, generally only running six agendas, all three pointers. That's usually what I've seen competitively at least. And they can name a card type and they get two cards when we play the first one. So a big thing we want to do is that they call resources, play two resources in that same turn. Oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and mute that. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, they forgot, they paid a credit to prevent this ice and it looks like they have no current. So we're gonna see what they call and try and set up. We have a pretty good setup here. They play events. We'll probably still play the gamble. Maybe we'll draw once. So we can play another thing, but if they play an event, we'll play Pad Tap, Gamble, Class Act, maybe click for credit. They named Resource. Okay, that's fine. If we play this, we get a credit, they get two. I think we want to do that anyways. So from here, we want to set up. Getting the Amakua down early is pretty good pressure because then if they they have to kind of pay to expose, otherwise they'll lose money. Uh, or sorry, well, we get Amakua counters, so they, they will lose their money. Um, from here, we generally want to do Gamble to Class Act to set up. We could draw one, but then we lose a filter draw from Class Act. I'd rather just get... A truckload of money. Playing extra resources all in one turn is really good when they call resources. Looks like they have no scarcity just yet. So we have a turning wheel in our deck. I think we still have two. I just haven't seen the deck list too well. I'll show that hopefully before the game or something. That's our single turning wheel. So we definitely want that. And we have three deuces. We probably don't need all of them. And uh, we have a lot of events because we're playing Anakam and we kind of snowball off of that. We get our card draw engine up once we find that. It's one of the new shaper consoles that came out in an Uprising. All right. Card and remote, server one, could just be an NGO front they're jamming out. It is an NGO front. If they don't pre-res it, which I think they should do now, we can always falsify it if we really care to. And they're playing Scar City last click. So we could run this. Then uh, They're now calling events. So if we play events, they get two credits, we get one credit. Uh, if we run this, it basically denies them. To, we spend a click to make them uh, lose two credits. And Econ Denial is kind of pretty big in this game uh, as 419. So I think we're going to deuce as wild first. We don't want to dirty laundry it because then we'll pop it and we'll lose value. Uh, yeah, we'll dirty laundry first. So we'll draw two, which is uh, fueled. We don't want that uh, Amakua. We have Citadel Sanctuary, which is a really good tech against IP block and just a lot of tagging cards. They might be on C-Source or Hardening News, stuff like that. Um, and I think we'll just we could expose an ice and make a run so we know what this ice is. Our money, it kind of matters for us to interact with them. Uh, I think we can just like run that to deny them some money. From here, we probably just play Turtle and Dirty Laundry Archives. We've now run, so we are risking hardening news, but it's not going to be the worst. We're still going to end with nine credits and a link. Cool. All right. So unfortunately, we did uh, play an event, so our pat tap already fired. There's some ways that you want to kind of trigger so your pat tap fires every turn. If they don't play generally an operation, we're not going to get a pat tap this turn. So it's kind of good on them that they got both of their uh, credits on the same turn. So they still have to build a remote. A lot of times these decks are going to build up large remotes. They have surveyors usually in there. Uh, we have Boomerang, which deals with survey pretty well. We're not actually going to get, be getting any more Link. We also did draw into our console Anakam, which is really sweet. It's like a great card draw. We want to play an event a turn, which is unfortunately into Asmari's ability. Uh, but we do have Corporate Grant too, which should keep their economy down. And now that they're at this uh, credit level, also it's really good for us because we have... Um, we do have Hernando, and a lot of their stuff has at least two to three subroutines. Like paying six for Reza, slot machine's pretty bad. Four for an IP block, seven for um, Surveyor. Oh, they call an event. Okay, well, we'll try and play two events. So we're going to play Anakam. So the first time an event is trash, draw one card. So even if you play an event, it's trashed. We'll draw first. We got Boomerang, Anakam, Corroder. We don't need another Anakam. Uh, we'll gain three. Unfortunately, we can't play another event, but hey, we drew into one, which is great. 
Chrono is fantastic. It lets us deal with early IP blocks. We are still going to take a tag from Amakua, but hopefully we can get rid of that with Citadel. I think the biggest thing we want to draw into right now is into our scarcities. Or sorry, our corporate grant, which is our restricted card. Just because this is going to control what we can and can't play. Uh, I think we could just actually run archives again to get a turtle token. There's not much of the, they're really threatening. If we get like a diversion, it's good. Their econ is doing pretty well right now. Uh, they might actually have the time to trash pad top, which I think you want to. A pad top lasting the whole game is an absurd amount of money. The thing is also, uh, I didn't even check if they mulliganed, whether we should be pressuring sensorals. Uh, they're icing up archives. It makes sense. They did mulligan. Um, the agendas we're generally playing around is SSL and Bellona. They're preventing this from being uh, shown, so easily could be an IP block. Um, I don't think there's that, that many bad face checks. Uh, I guess new sound was kind of annoying. Once we get this to four strength, not so much. The called event once again. Dirty laundry diversion. I think we'll definitely take the diversion, and, we, and then we can just do boomerang diversion next turn. Um, it's a pretty good setup. We could even do this turn, but if we in theory hit like an IP block, we will still take the tag from a Makua, and they did prevent this ice. We actually know none of their ice. We could be using Deuces Wild to like see their ice. I think our last Deuces is on the bottom of the deck. Um, and I don't want to show this this turn, so I think we might just install Corroder and click for two credits. Uh, we are on Rogue Trading, so we want to get our Citadel down soon, and eventually we should have some good money. Um, we have a single copy also of Hernando Cortez, which would be really good right now because uh, money. Because we want to do that Econ Denial game. All right, into the remote, they're pushing. We have a boomerang for that if we really need to go aggressive. We're not sure what kind of punishment they are. And they could be on hard-hitting news. They could be on C-Source. Um, they now have the credit lead, so they could like value hard-hitting news, which, you know, is okay. Let's see if they want to pay a credit to, to, to prevent this. Yeah, 419 does put the squeeze on. I think this is probably the more competitive deck we're playing. They played a credit for that. Advance. Advance. And they just resing the NGO front. That's a really good play. I like when they res that. Um, it means that uh, that we can't falsify it. But I think we'll just do Boomerang into Doof. As soon as we Doof them, they can pop the NGO front. Because as soon as we play the Doof, they're still calling event. They'll get their credits worth. I don't think there's anything that has more than two subroutines. The worst thing here would be IP block, I suppose. Because of uh, the tag we'll take from Amakua. It's a Raven. Oh, that's fine. Uh... Yeah, I think we'll still boomerang that. It shuffles our deck too, so the deuces come up. I guess it brings a class act up, which isn't amazing. Uh, this is why Citadel's really good, but we'll definitely take the tag. Um, we'll break the subroutines. We'll continue. And they should pop the NGO front before their turn ends, so they don't give us another pad tab credit. Do the diversion. We'll shuffle it back. Ooh, ooh! Bravado, Cortez. Well, we wanted the Cortez. They will have an extra eight credits. Cortez doesn't seem amazing right now because of the scarcity, but we'll clear that soon. I keep forgetting that every time we play event, we draw a card. That's such good value. We'll just go ahead and remove the tag here. And they didn't pop the NGO front, so they could have prevented us from getting a credit. I think they want to pop that on our turn as soon as we play an event. Just because this only triggers once, first time per turn. All right, they have seven credits. Uh, this is also particularly not a great, it's, it's definitely a very good and annoying taxing ice. There's the pat tap, so that NGO front wouldn't be that big of a problem. They just popped it. But the, the problem with this thing is if we do get our uh, turning wheel down, we can just bump into this over and over again and get turning wheel tokens, which can help us end the game. We're also running Stargate in this deck, which is kind of spicy, and we're only running one turning wheel. And I like Stargate a lot, especially in a meta where you don't know what people are playing. Single NGO front res. Uh, so again, we could run that to prevent two credits. They're calling event once more. Oh, uh, that's their third NGO front, which is huge. They probably have a preemptive, but now anything they advance events at remote is an agenda. And that's a huge, huge tell. I want to draw into a current. We have a falsified and a Begalter. Uh, Begalter does surveyor pretty well. Falsified is not that important now that three NGO fronts are out. It does give us a counter on Amakua. But I think we're going to take the Begalter. It also is good because it, it just like draws with Anakam, which is way nicer in this deck. I think we can draw once more. Oh, we do have a class second hand. It's not in our deck. We have all our breakers, but we don't have any money. I don't think we want to install this for four. Installing this for four is not the worst either. We could poke and just run r and I'm just worried about IP block. I really want to get this down first. I think we can draw again and hopefully install something. It's another Anakam. So you can take a credit and throw out two cards. It's not the worst. We just need to draw into our current. It's kind of the thing we want to do here. And there's still like, they were going to have probably, uh, what, plus seven, 17 credits, and they, they might push for a remote. We have, I think, two boomerangs in the deck. We have access to most of our, well, we have access to all our breakers, not that we can install them. So really, we just want to get our three currents. It's like a one in, well, we see two cards when we draw, 
but we have three and 27 cards so it's it's we're gonna find it pretty soon right right we did shuffle too so i guess our draw is slightly worse but only deuce is wild worse now we're anakim and class act is in the heap it's worth knowing that you can install another class act if you want yeah we'll pay to expose that so that helps against turning wheel it also means that they we don't know what we need to to uh get into hq and to siphon and they probably have two agendas in hand based off how slow this game is going like it's turn seven they've scored nothing uh which means something and the calling event again cool dirty laundry or gamble uh probably just take the gamble so we want to play two events if we can that's not two events so we could just like gamble install i don't think we want to install turtle we can just gamble install turning wheel and then we can start face checking we're basically paying four for this their econ should be pretty squeezed as soon as we get drawn to our current we just need to draw into current against three and 25 so one in a chance we see two cards is a bit better than that if we play this they get two so we don't want to play the current we don't want to play this we don't need to play this um, code gates is actually interesting what they play. I don't know if they actually run any code gates. Maybe there's a cheeky enigma, but most of the code gates they run, I guess this does deal with, uh, with, um, what's it called? Slot machine relatively well, but if I'm not mistaken, there's not too many code gates in this deck or these sort of glacier and uh, decks that like require a breaker. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is like a single toll booth. Hey, Hydra, <laughs> Hydra, heck of a lot. I think we just click, click two here. I don't want to give them the money with this. I think we just put down Cortez, uh, admittedly, and for four, and then click. We also didn't get our Anakam draw. Maybe we wanted to gamble Anakam so we had a chance of drawing into something better. But Hernandez is going to put a pretty big squeeze on it. It means that they probably don't want to pop this. We might have wanted for them to pop this. But again, admittedly, if they're going to jam into remote, they're going to have to pop this NGO front. I guess unless they build another remote, but then we just run it. I suppose that's a bit worse for us. All right, so our win condition is get the current up, hopefully, and then we can either get our Stargate down, which is one of in the deck, and this Turning Wheel, which is in our hand, and then from there we can pull them apart. We're going to still have to access half their agendas, or steal even half of their agendas from the deck, which can be pretty hard. Bologna is also self-protecting, which can be pretty mean. Um, but this thing does get a lot of value in the deck. Surveyors, again, for seven. Um, what is this? Slot machine for six is absurd. David's thinking here. <laughs> Might want to keep that NG on the table to stay underneath Hernando's credit value. And we also have a lot of money still in our deck. Like, we have three rogue tradings. Uh, rogue trading is a lot of money, especially when we can do, like, Citadel Sanctuary and then clear the tag for free. Um, it's pretty good. We got one link. That's good enough. Even click, clear the tag clicklessly for one, rogue trading is still a pretty good econ card. Purging. Okay, cool. Time walk. Well, I, I don't think because of IP block we can really depend on this guy, um, on Amakua. So the purge isn't the worst. Uh, we want to draw in two again. Rogue Trading or Stargate? I think Stargate's our win condition. If we put it on the bottom of the deck, we can't get it anywhere else. Um, let's draw into Current. No, we didn't. But at least we could do, like, in theory, Bravado onto... That's awkward. That actually is awkward, because now we're going to draw a card if we play one of those. Hmm. I want to run this first, but as soon as we run, I guess we have to play this. Is This is not optional, right? No. Okay, we're going to give them money. Gamble. And then we can install the Pad Tap. It's pretty bad right now. It will slow them down. We pay this for two. They trash it for three. That's not the worst. What do we throw out here, though, is the problem. Um, we definitely want to install something because we don't want to throw out two cards. I think we'll install the pad tap. It's unfortunate. Obviously, draw order. They got the cards from that. But at least the NGO from might give them money. They're also on 10 now. We could have, in theory, actually like gave them money by playing an event and then or by bravadoing and then bravadoing in R&D. They would be hard to res. Uh, we got to throw something out. This is such a good econ card. And this card draw. I think everything is really important. I don't actually know if we need the Amina, but I'm going to hold on to it. We probably want to install over the turtle relatively soon. They iced up all their centrals. We're not going to get free turtle counters. Throwing out Bravado seems really wrong. That's rough. That's really rough. I guess we throw out the Citadel. Ah, no, now rogue trading is terrible. Ah, fuck. Maybe that was wrong. Yeah, maybe we wanted to keep that. Well, maybe lights aren't the right color. That's nice. That's subtle. Are you trashing the pad tab that pulls them back? Again, it is turn nine. They haven't scored anything. They don't even have a remote. So we get that late game eventuality of just drawing into our currents, hopefully, and locking them down. They played a hedge fund. So our pad tab is gone. And now we actually can bravado in. And it will cost them uh, probably a small fortune to res. 
We could do Stargate first into Bravado. Oh, actually, we can because that's a run event. I think we're just going to go ahead and Stargate R&D and see what this looks like. I think worst case scenario is IP block just because we have to clear the tag. But again, now that they're over 10 credits, Hernando is going to make them pay a premium. Ooh, it's an Archangel. They pay five for that. Okay, that's a trace. We do have Link. And this bounces something. Uh, the bounce is kind of annoying right here. It definitely is annoying. Uh, we're going to let the subs fire. Do we pay five? I guess we're getting all our money back with with um, with Bravado. Unfortunately, we're not going to have um, credits to steal Bologna. I think we pay five. What else do they bounce? They bounce this. I don't know if we reinstall it. Probably should. Bouncing Amaku is fine. Bouncing Anakam is fine. I don't know if we pay into this. We're going to draw a card after this. I don't think we pay into this. Like, the worst case is this, and this costs six. But at least we save the money, and this has done enough work. Yeah, we can play that later once we have our current. Yeah, I don't think we, we pay into this. So they can bounce a card. This is trace six to return an install card back to hand. It's hard to start getting through this thing. And they actually return Hernando. Woo! I guess it makes sense. So we're going to pass ice and continue. We've got an axis here. We can steal Bologna. I'll turn the current off. That's kind of nice, I guess. It's a sea source. Okay, that's scary. So they have an extra eight credits. So they're technically on 17. We do have a link. Uh, we got to choose what to draw. We don't need the special order. I guess we'll draw another rogue trading. Man, remember when we threw out Citadel? Good times. Uh, so then we have to pay another four for Hernando down the line. We'll draw into a current right here. Shit. I think we do play rotating for two. Oh, no, it's so bad without it. Now we have one in 20. Oh my God. What are we doing? All right, I think we just credit credit. We can throw out Amakua. Rope trading is, again, it's just so good in the matchup, but I think we might just have enough. We don't have like a, the drip economy from things like uh, Rizeki. So this econ card is actually super, super important. I really don't know if we're going to need the Amina. I just don't know if we can rely on Amakua. I'll play this for two. That's an investment. They could, in theory, see source us, I think. Nine plus eight is 17. It'd be pretty bad for them, but they could. Question is if they're playing sea source, like, is it closed accounts? Is it exchange of information? Is it all seeing eye? There's a lot of strong plays with sea source. All right, so now they're pushing for a moment. We have boomerangs in this deck, too. I think we have two. Yeah, we have two. So even if we don't have the breaker, we can threaten. And they paid to protect it. I'm assuming Surveyor. They're now on 10 credits as well, which is great. Oh, uh, we could just poke Archives, but let's draw into our current. There we go, got it. All right, so now we're gonna turn the tables a bit. So we're gonna play an event, which we... Doesn't that draw us a card? Oh no, it's when it's trash, not when it's played, of course. And so now we can play some of our currents or some of our resources, and then we can start snowballing. This is when we should have definitely kept the Citadel. Let's see if we ever played it in Amina, finally. So now we want to install one card a turn, which is good stuff so that they can lose a credit a turn. And then we have to keep them hopefully down. Uh, they are still right over Hernando. So the reses are going to be pretty painful. And if they can't res this ice, we can always bounce off and get in turning wheel. And again, they probably have like multiple agendas in hand. We just, unfortunately, this deck doesn't have hunting grounds because it has Stargate instead, which probably is a mistake in the modern meta. I think hunting grounds is so good and being with the data raven so trivially is kind of a big deal. What's the, the good pull here? Like, so we can get into diversion? All right, and they're perfectly on 10. I think we actually can just run archives. Let's try and do a bravado or something. We just respect sea source. Citadel. Okay, we'll play the Citadel for sure. So now we can play Citadel and start Econ Engine. So we install this. They lose a credit. Now running with uh, with uh, Hernando's a little bit worse. And we can take six from this. We can end our turn. Actually, in theory, we should have waited there because they took could have took NGO front money and made this a bit more difficult. We probably should have waited. Whoops. Maybe that wasn't safe because they could have got up to 17 and actually contested this trace. If they went all in, I don't know what punishment they have. Like with a single tag, they can't do too much. They could trash Hernando maybe in the turning wheel. I guess Hernando won't matter when they go low. But now we can just double click this. And I think we only have one more in the deck because we did throw out one. Oh, no, we just buried it. OK, cool. This is obviously a huge economy, uh, not Hernando itself, but rogue trading. They're on 17. So we need to get all our things down. We can probably let them score one agenda. We want to also draw every turn to get the value from that. We always want to draw every turn. We want to install every turn. And this is almost definitely has to be an agenda if they double advance it. The question is whether it's an SSL or a Bellona. 
And I think no matter what, we make them res. Uh, so if it hits an IP block, it's not that bad for us. We can take the tag. So I think we actually can keep the Amaqua around. So we'll draw them once for Bravado, then we'll basically install Begalta and Bravado this remote. I don't want the falsified. I think we know what this stuff is. So we want the Begalter specifically for scarcity. I mean, sorry, wow, for, uh, for Surveyor. So they lost the credit. So we can play deuces, they'll gain two, we'll gain two, and then we can expose and make a run. At two strength, Amakua doesn't have any really nice breakpoints. A gold farmer also would be an issue, but we can get through gold farmer. I think we run, even if they res, I think we're ahead. And we can always use this to clear the tag and get more value if we need to. I, I don't think we need to expose here. We can clear the tag with this too. All right, Adamo Sice again. Hernando's online. So this can get really expensive. Double IP blocks are annoying. I guess that's why we have a click left. So it's an IP block. So we're gonna take a tag. We can remove one of those if we can't. They spend four for that. They're just underneath Hernando, which is you know really good for them. And we'll break for four. What could this be? Gold farmer? Surveyor? I think we can still get through. It's a surveyor. It's a small surveyor too. So we only break this for three. We literally cannot steal Bologna. We have to hope this is SSL. Oh, great. <laughs> it's an SSL, they get more money. But at least we stole it. And now there's another agenda in hand. They're probably gonna jam next turn. The question is, what do we do? We haven't played events this turn just yet, and I don't think we want to because they'll get more money. So we can kind of lean on the Citadel Sanctuary. Here we can either draw, or oh, I think we already did draw, didn't we? Yeah, we did draw. So we probably can just click for a credit. I think we want to play two events on a turn if we do. Uh, we can click for a credit. And we, next turn we can recover. We can do rogue trading, run the remote, and then clear a tag. So we'll just do this. We'll probably clear the tag for free. I don't think they'll boost into this. And at least now they're playing around uh, her not a relatively well. But we can lock the, the remote down. I think we could also decide to overinstall on the Amakua, which wouldn't be bad. But I don't think they have the money to, to res their archives ice. So there's a big chance that Amakua might be all we need. Six strength Amaku is definitely the best way that we get through an Archangel. All right, expose. This is definitely another agenda. The question is whether we can get through it, and I think we can. We have to do the math whether or not we can steal the Bologna if this is a Bologna. Oh, it's a Rashida. Okay, that's fine. Ish. An IPO. Wow, they have money now. Okay. They have money, so we can also sit back and do rogue trading. We'll draw once. It's a bravado or a trading. Wow. Bravado is obviously really good for this remote. It makes it harder to steal Bologna. They're getting money from this. They're going to get money in cards from Rashida. So we want to be able to contest the remote. Uh, so we definitely are going to be doing rogue trading this turn. Uh, I think we probably want the Bravado. Resting Rashida, nice. I like that. Plays around falsified. We know what it is. I don't think we... We might actually falsify it here for, for four credits in a card. It's really good. <laughs> Um, so I don't know, do we take the, the rogue trading? The rogue trading, what do we do? It's an install, which is really good. It robs them a credit, which is always nice. Then we can install it, and then we can double click this rogue trading. I think we won't have enough money. They can boost into the tag. So maybe we don't install this turn. I think if they boost into the tag, though, it's really bad for them. So this puts on 11, we have one link. So if we click for credit, like they can get through. It's just gonna be very difficult. I guess we could have installed this. This is kind of equivalent to clicking for a credit because it brings them down one. Yeah, they're not fighting it. Fantastic. For those who don't know, this is Citadel Sanctuary that says at the end of the turn uh, they can trace. It starts as a trace one, and if successful, uh, or unsuccessful, as in we pay more than them, or usually pay nothing because we have a link, we get to remove the tag for free, which is really great with this card, this pseudo tag me card. Actually, I don't like the light in here. We can do better, right? I think that's regular. No. That's regular light. So Rashida gain three again. They probably have two agendas in hand. Uh, again, the Data Raven can be pretty tricky. They're also probably on their seventh agenda point is um, Echo Chamber, which is you know annoying. Uh, they're building these big remotes up. It's good to get you know we can bravado against these. It can be pretty nice. Let's see if they they spend one to prevent it. So I think we know none of the ice. I think next turn if they don't push in the remote, it looks like they can't really push in the remote because they need to do install advance advance. Uh, this could easily be a Rashida. It also could be an Echo Chamber. 
So now the surveys are going better. So we just want to draw into a boomerang. So I think our turn is basically draw once to get the value draw, find a boomerang. Oh, pet tap's good. The version is good too. Yeah, the version's probably better. The cool thing now with Data Raven is that we can always just like get through it. I think we can just diversion here. They're going to get two credits. Then we take some of their money away. We gain money. It's not amazing. It gets a turning book counter. It doesn't get an Amakua counter. It's not amazing. We probably want to just poke archives, force them to res something. We have to watch out for Seasaurs. So we can poke archives and then just gain six from Rogue Trading. I'm assuming this is an Echo Chamber or another Rashida. Let's see, force them to spend here. Getting enough Amakua um, counters is good. Getting to four is pretty me meaningful for both IP Block and Raven. Wow, whoa, SSL, yeah, they're definitely very flooded. Uh, they threw out a closed account, so C-Source into closed accounts was kind of the thing they had. Whoops, ooh. Maybe they're setting up for a preemptive action, but now we only need one agenda to score. They are going to get a shit ton of money, so now the pad tab actually would have been better. It was going to fire for sure. Uh, so I think we're just going to go ahead and take our rogue trading before rogue trading is a bit scarier to take. Uh, we have another rogue trading. We didn't cost them the corporate grant that turn, which is a bit of a bummer, but... Still, we are taxing them out, and we are now on game point, and all their advanceables are in here. There's a Rashida. So basically, if they install advanced events, anything in their remote, as long as we can get in once, we don't have to worry about punishment or anything else. I don't think they're playing Ghost Branch or anything wild. They had a really slow start. They're on 24, though. But again, Survey is like 7 to res. I don't think they put the slot machine on the remote. Gold Farmer is like 5 to res. That money goes away pretty quickly. Just plug down the Stargate, maybe cheese it out, but I think it's definitely an HQ. We don't have any HQ multi access besides Turning Wheel itself. Thinking. Nine cards in hand, a lot of options. They still have to score three agendas or two and an echo chamber, all in a remote that doesn't have any tricks. It's pretty honest. It's just like some ice. I think the worst case here is like Surveyor, IP Block Surveyor. They could be on board of control. I haven't counted influence exactly. This is two, four, six, if you're playing all of them. They could be on a border control, and I guess border control here would be a bit frustrating, specifically with IP block tag. We always do have click compression to remove the tag. We could divert. It's not actually that good. Lowering their money is okay. It's definitely not bad. It forces them or encourages them to res. We also didn't get an Amaku counter because we did see the SSL, and this is pretty good money. We have other players from Montreal coming into this room. The, the round is over. We started a bit late. We're going to have a bit more time. We also run, bounce, jack out, like if it's a gold farmer or anything that just ends a run, like we can just build up turning wheel tokens, which is pretty good. Let's do it for TV. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, they do have sea source. They can sea source here. So it looks like it might be sea source into closed accounts, which would be huge. So this is a huge trace. Um, they have to beat 19, which is going to be the majority of their money. From this point, going tag me is a bit scary. So 20, they got it. So, you know, that's the thing is like we respect hard any news. We don't respect. Oh! <laughs> Oh, uh, that's the all-seeing eye. We lost all our resources. We still have a tag to clear. They only have four credits. Wait, they did undo click? Oh, hedge fund. Oh, nice. Into all-seeing eye. Rude. Okay, so they have eight credits. We have no resources anymore. Um, I still think we can do this. We definitely want to probably clear this tag. They're going to have more credits too. Um, but they're remote. I think now if we just camp the remote, we can win. Unless they play preemptive. And then it gets a bit dicier. I guess we still have three falsifieds in the deck if they do. All right, the calling event. All right, well, our value draws aren't that anymore. We could also just go all in and like Stargate. Probably not worth it, but cool anyways. Always feels good to ruin the board. Uh, I think we can run archives, maybe get some tokens, force them to spend some money. They threw out something. It's probably not anything. It's probably just some ice. They did draw a lot with Rashida. But again, they've had multiple agendas in here. We probably could just go in and close the game. We have no more Citadels in our deck, so we're actually going to have to clear the tag. Unless we do deuces, but their money's bad. This actually probably is a good time to, to, to diversion, in retrospect. You're thinking the res here. Oh, no. We get in. It's probably going to be an Amaku counter. Uh, they threw out a Jinja. Whoa. Wow. We must have got fortunate. I don't know if they have additional card draw if they run like attitude adjustment or anything. Um, okay, so we have diversion. We can end our turn with a tag, which so far the worst thing we've seen is a one closed accounts and they've thrown it out. They could have another. They could have archive memories. 
maybe it's good for us to clear the tag, but this seems like a pretty fine turn to, to divert them. I guess if they reds here, and they can also boost into the trace, I guess we break this. And we have to clear two tags. We can do it next turn, we're in no rush. I think we want to install one card, so we'll draw. Nice, okay, so that's our next couple turns. We'll remove the tag, and then we'll just install the rogue trading so they lose a credit from the corporate grant. It's hard to use this. Like, if we use this to gain six and then pay two to clear the tag, it's not amazing. We have no more um, citadels, so we can't do it anymore. This deck could run no one home pretty easily. It kind of likes it too with corporate grant. Uh, but we always can remove the tag a bit more with value with Deuce's Wild if we want to get that rogue trading value. We just install this right now to make them lose credits. Maybe installing a Stargate was even better. But I think the winning agendas are definitely in hand. We can just focus on that. I think next turn we can run archives. Ooh, they do have money again. I guess we gave them a lot of money with these SSLs. So I think we can divert right here. If we run archives once, there's a chance that uh, that we can pay one for this, but I think we pay one anyways, right? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, they're definitely in HQ. We don't have sneaked our beta. They're gonna prevent this. This also could easily be a big old surveyor. So maybe our window has left. Maybe we definitely need to site the next turn. But again, I guess we could run archives three times. If we run archives next three times, like the Stargate looks pretty great. They're just gonna call events again. We want to install something. Let's draw once. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if we're installing something. How much does it cost to break Archangel? Four. Oh, it's really not bad. And they lose one. Installing this is a problem. Most of our money is tied up in. Oh, wait. That, that's not what we wanted to do. That's what we wanted to do. And they're gonna have to push for their moat. So basically, all we need to get is enough counters. If we run this three times, they can't push for their moat. Oh, endless Eula! Imagine red resing this for twelve when we had uh, our friend Cortez. Okay, we're gonna just end the run here. That's good. Little Subroutine's fire. Now they can still res a Surveyor. We could still break it. It's going to be pretty expensive. We're going to end the run. But now we can put them... If we play Diversion, they're on 8 credits. We draw one. We have no clicks left. So if we hit an IP block, it's a bit annoying. I don't know if we want to Divert right now. They're going to start with 9 next turn anyways. We'll draw once. Oh, wow. Yeah, of course. There's There they are. Um, Fuck it. Stargate. Let's go. Uh, Double Grant... We don't have that many more resources. It's good to keep that on the table. If they play a scarcity, it's it's like a click and a credit for them, and I don't think it's going to matter on our side. I'm playing a bit too safe. I think we could just go HQ and win off of a single, as long as we're accessing with five credits, because I think they have three more Bolognas, one more SSL in the deck. We should be in a pretty safe spot. But again, if we can just camp the remote, I don't think there's anything they can do until they preemptive back end geo fronts. All right, now all the drip money is out. Ooh, yeah, we really need to go HQ. <laughs> That's the the repost to the Stargate. A Bravado HQ would be good too. Just gets value. I think we can just diversion turn one, see how it goes. Click one, I mean. All right, if they res everything here, like then we can Stargate. Fuck it. The survey would be big. Six. So it's five, six, seven. It's five for us to face check that. They spend five, two. Yeah, there you go. Oh, now they don't have money for the remote, really. Uh, it's going to be a long game, just because I guess we have to boomerang this and divert again. We gave them two, so uh, this is exactly why we wanted to get Amaku up to, to, to high strength. 6-6 six, six is really good here. They can always add an ice to make it 8. Uh, we'll let all subs fire. We're only going to break the, the, the two tags. We're not going to pay for the end of the end. Actually, no, we're going to break everything, because it technically is one credit cheaper. Yeah, we might actually continue in. Oh, sorry, whoops. Wait, whoops. Of course we'll break that. Wait, thinking. Because we pay five to break that. Sorry. If we pay five to break it, what do we pay? I think we pay five to Begalter, so we might as well break it. Well, that depends whether we're going to run again. Begalter, but I don't think we will. Excuse me. Uh, so to boost, it's five, then six, seven, so it's five. So we're actually just going to break it. We get two back when we pass it. They could res here if they res like a data raven, whatever. We also, oh, we don't have turning wheel anymore. Whoops. Now we also can uh, hit this. Oh no, we can't do this wild out. These are very click intensive cards. Oh, it's an IP block. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, so that's a trace three. Fuck, that's annoying. I guess we have to do this for credits and remove the tag. Uh, at least they're down on two credits, and like the agendas are in hand here. So we're just gonna sit back and probably do this every turn. 
Uh, let all subroutines fire, or do we break it? It's basically two to avoid another tag and end the run. I think we want to do that. We could go tag me and try and win, but we do that a boom, and that would feel pretty bad. They can oh they no they can't do credit credit boom. Uh, no they can just trace us. No then they can boost into it. Why give them that option? We pay one more. We could go further. We can't. No, we're not gonna do it. Ah. So we need Rizeki Drip. Oh, event is over. So we get that. So here, what are we going to do? I think we definitely want to remove the tag and just gain three. Definitely was a bit strong. Uh, we could install a card to make them lose a credit. Class Act is not that impactful. We can just click for a credit here again. They have to jam for the remote. So like, it's going to might be a long game until they flood up or they just click for credits where they feel secure in the remote. Luckily, we do have two boomerangs. So we can just like boomerang this thing. This could be another surveyor, I guess. And then just click for credits. This is the same click. It's like what? Three clicks for four. It's slightly better. Slightly better. We'll draw once. Yeah, there you go. Three clicks for four. <laughs> slightly better than clicking for credits. Less flexible. Wait, was that a really good Stargate turn? I think it's a really good Stargate turn. I don't think they care if we bounce anything. I just really don't know if there's agendas left in their deck. We definitely should have Stargate last turn. How much money they had? Two? What is this, a Rashida? It's going to draw the rest of your deck. It could be an Echo Chamber. It's not particularly compelling. Could that be the last Rashida? I guess so. It also could be a Jinja. That would be a problem. Drawn to Bravado? Nice. Oof. Just clicking for credits, the game. Yeah, it's a Jinja. Might have to win off Centrals. Well, we also know they don't jam an ice here. It's gonna make the survey a lot better, but we don't care too much because of Boomerang. We're gonna have to care because of other ice. So that means they drew two cards that aren't ice. This is interesting too, because they still have to pay to expose it with Jinja, even though they're showing us what it is. So they still have to pay a credit unless they want to get an Amaku counter. And getting an Amaku to four can be pretty meaningful. When now we can deal with HQ relatively well. We can now that our deck is also really thin, we can just like install boomerang, they lose one, and then we can just divert this. And we're gonna end up taking a tag. We might actually want to overinstall the Amaku. Maybe we should have done that a while ago. We probably should have done that a while ago. Alright, this is a surveyor. Cool. Boomerang is unique. We can't double boomerang the remote. Uh, they also could be throwing out agendas and archives pretty easily. So, we could do boomerang into diversion. We'd have to remove two tags. But they'd have no money. Well, actually, they'd gain two money because they called event. So they'd be at nine. They'd be down at four. Ugh. And we'd be spending four to clear the tags. We just need to get single accesses. I think we should just go for singles here. I think we're just going to play uh, Boomerang and Bravado HQ and call it a day. We have to probably clear two tags. We might have fucked up and wanted to overinstall the Amakua. I guess if this doesn't hit, it gets a counter. And once it's at six counters, we can charge R&D for Stargate. Yeah, you can't just trash a program. You have to install another program. Man, a hunting grounds would be so good. I guess Citadel does this here. Like normally we have Citadel, so this isn't a problem. Uh, this will break both the subs. It's now at strength, and this will take another tag and break both. Uh, break one, and we have five, so we can steal Bologna perfectly. Uh, we'll take a. Oh, sorry. Take a tag, of course. Um, we get good money from the Bravado. I think we have another Bravado left in our deck. Uh, we'll break. Four strength. Yeah, not exposing here was huge for us. All right. Probably two and five, maybe even three and five. I assume there might be an agenda in archives. It's an echo chamber. But trashing that actually removes one of their win conditions in the long run. They usually play two of these. If we don't trash it, though, we get an Amakua counter. I think we still trash it. 
Yes, thank you. Ooh, we draw two rogue trading. I guess we'll remove two tags. We could consider removing one tag, but we lose really hard to 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 close accounts at this point. Ah, this is so painful. We have a win off singles. We have another bravado in our deck. We have another two boomerangs in our deck. We're just gonna try and draw into those. We also know these cards that they're not drawing. They're like. Anything the advance advance we can run. Prevent a card from being exposed. Advance, advance. So even if we make them spend three measly credits, they can't res any of this stuff. So we know this is a surveyor. If they res the surveyor, it's fine. If they res this surveyor, if they res the surveyor, they can't score the agenda. They still have so many agendas to score. Now, if it's a Bologna, it gives them the money back. If it's a SSL, it gives them even more money. The question is, can we get through that and have five credits to steal with Bologna? I miss my Rizekis. <laughs> uh, so we could also falsify this. So what's left in the deck? We have um, one. We only have two falsifieds in this deck. Oh, that's a surprise. I thought we'd play three because we have enough Anakam value. Actually, all the falsifieds are left in this deck. So we have basically uh, two Boomerang, one Bravado, two falsifieds. That's most of the deck. Um, we're hoping, I guess, that they score this and it, they pay five for that. Then they're still on nothing. If they score this, they go they go down to three. They gain five. They're on seven. So it might be a fine time to poke R and D. If they res here, like what can we do? I also think we can just let this thing fire. If it bounces the arc, the Hamaku, we might actually just have fewer problems to deal with. We also could just like say like, okay, you get this one, we'll get the next one. We also could install a card so that they can't res the surveyor. Do I know the third ice? I don't think so. So there's a small chance we can get into this remote if we top deck boomerang, install the boomerang, uh, calling this, then they'll lose the credit so they can't res this one. We don't know what this is, but they have to res it for four, and it can't be a surveyor because we know all three it is. If they res it, they probably can't score. Um, then we can break this for one, two, and then we can break this for free. We'll have ex if we top deck a boomerang, we exactly win. Piss. <laughs> ah, it was worth it, wasn't it? It was worth a shot. I think if we top deck boomerang, we would exactly get in. It was a two and nine. That's not a bad choice. Shot one and four. Uh, I think we still install the rogue trading just to fuck with them. I hope. It, I guess we can hope it's an SSL, maybe, and then they go down to two credits, and we can win off of archives. I'm uh, sorry, we win off of Stargate. Even Stargate trashing the cards make them closer to losing the game. But I think we can just get credits. Getting credits seems good. Because we can run their remote. <laughs> Four for three. Nice. Yeah. No, wait. It's, four it's three for four. Yeah, yeah. Three for four. Four for three is a lot worse. It's a slot machine? Fine. It makes the surveyors bigger, but they also paid to, to expose that. Oh, that's actually a really big deal. Do they score this? Please SSL. It's probably not likely. Oh, it's a Bologna. And it trashed a current, so we drew a card. That's a cool interaction. Wasn't aware of that. Um, from this point on, uh, we could try and win off of Stargate. They have six credits. We know it's slot machine, which doesn't matter too much into a surveyor. That doesn't matter a bit more. I think if we get the corporate grant down. They technically gain a credit. Uh, from here, they want to jam two more remotes, uh, two more agendas, and um, try and win. I think we just, I think we just, uh, Stargate. Is there anything that we care if they bounce? I guess we care if they bounce this. What's it cost to get through this? Like six? Yeah, like straight up six. No way to make that cheaper. Um, we want to get this onto six strength. Also, we're not going to get Amaku counters if we Stargate. We know all their scary ice. I think we actually could just like boomerang this thing. We also could do like, yeah, fuck it. We can do corporate grand gamble, boomerang run, and then we're weak to IP block. And by weak, I mean hopefully they don't have a close account. So if they have a close account, they win. Thinking. Um. Grant boomerang. We could just face check. We don't need to do any of that stuff. We pay five for this. I guess we just boomerang then face check. I'm trying to get too much value. This shovels a boomerang into our deck, which is kind of rough. 
And if we hit an agenda here, we just run archives, we win. We have 11. Okay, it's a slot machine. Uh, that fires. This lets us see what we're drawing into, which is pretty good. Hopefully, resource event hardware. So we just lose three. We have a pad tap on top of falsified into boomerang. So pad tap, falsified boomerang. boomerang, boomerang. This is also good because they didn't make money off of it. So we lose three. Another re good reason to run hunting grounds. I guess NVN has the most reasons to run hunting grounds. All right, we're going to continue. They can only rest for three. IP block could be a slot machine. We're going to continue the encounter. We'll boomerang this. And I really don't want to play events. I really don't want to play events. It's another slot machine. They have no money and it hit event hardware event. Fuck, they're getting the three credits back. We don't have an option to break this. Uh, we could install uh, Amina, it's kind of hard, but now we're closer to Falsified, which is going to be really good, specifically when they jam an agenda, which we know it's an agenda, and then we can Falsify it to get another counter on Amakua, which could be meaningful, so I'll subspire for sure on here, and then we'll just Boomerang this. I guess it's, well, depends. If we shuffle a Boomerang, none of this shit matters, because we shuffle our whole deck, and I think we are going to shuffle a Boomerang back in the deck. Uh, we still have five credits, so we can, in theory, do Gamble, Run Archives, and Win if there's a Blown in there, if I'm not mistaken. No, we, we couldn't. Uh, what am I doing? So, yeah. Arguably, we got a lot of that fire. I don't know if Armaku is helping us or hurting us. It's a Gold Farmer, Rashida, and Scarcity. So the Rashida's pretty shit. The Gold Farmer is good and annoying. Uh, Scarcity doesn't matter. So we'll trash the Gold Farmer. If they can't draw three with Rashida, it'll put them closer to death. Shuffle Boomerang in. Yeah, okay. So we can draw once. We wanted to draw the boomerang. We hit it. If we play this, we um, unfortunately give them a credit. So I think we want to set up for a turn uh, that's more closer to like corporate grant, gamble. I think we really ought to check archives at some point. It just costs six, and we have no good way to deal with this. We have no like D-Rose effect or anything. Um, I think we could probably safely throw out the Amina. If they purge behind Enigma, they win. It's just how many turns they need. They do need to do, okay, thinking. They need to do install advance advance. Let's just hope that they don't have a preemptive and they actually could, they really could. But they can do install advance advance. We also know that we can just go ham through this if we really need to. Uh, install advance advance, that's one turn. So they have six cards left. Um, uh, score, five cards left. Install, four cards left. Score, three cards left. If they have another echo chamber, it's not in the bottom seven, it's in hand. I don't wanna play an event, it'll give them money. I don't play rogue trading. I guess we'll just play rogue trading. Now we can just click for a credit as well. Yeah, I think this this false diversion is actually pretty clutch because we can take a tag and put him down to zero. I think that is actually worse than the Mina. They see that we have it because we can always just go ham and just uh, diversify, like just to be like, okay, you're at zero. You can't win if they ever jam too hard. And they also need to click for credits just to get up too. Like going to five here would be really bad. Like if we played an event here, they could do install advance events and threaten to score next turn. Now they lose a whole turn. I haven't checked gambles or anything else that is in their deck. And they're just clicking to three. So that's loss of a turn, which is really good. In theory, this doesn't, and none of this ends the run. So we can just stargate through this if we really want to. Oh man, I don't know if we play gamble. Oh, they're calling hardware. Oh, fuck yeah. Holy shit, that's huge. Okay. Corporate Grant, play an event, drew into a pad tap, that, it's okay. Uh, we could play the rogue trading, we want to play something so they lose a the credit. This pad tap is nice, it sometimes makes money off a of slot machine. It means if they play another econ card, we make money. <laughs> I didn't realize they switched to hardware, that's great. We have the hardware in hand, which is what they're playing around. Um, we'll install that so they lose a the credit, they can still jam next turn. If we can make them lose another credit, maybe through Amino that we just threw out, it'd be bad. And I think we just want money. Because we can still contest the remote. Because if they do install advance advance, like they can't res another surveyor, let alone we can always play the rogue trading to bring them down one. And I think we know everything besides this uh, middle ice. They might actually deck out. I'm just hoping they don't have a preemptive. A lot of times these decks do. Maybe in a 40 card deck you don't, but this deck relies on echo chamber. And if echo chamber gets trashed, you kind of need a preemptive. What's left in our deck? I think we have a falsified and a bravado and a boomerang. Undo click uh, with a slash. Cool. Yeah, if you take a credit you don't want to, you can also just like give yourself a click, minus a credit, stuff like that. Turn 24, oh my god. We've been going for like 40 minutes. We still have a whole other game to play. They're jamming right here, and they can't score this if we install, like, uh, like we can buy ourselves another turn. We know it's an agenda. We know that they're on three credits. 
Let's see what they call. They call it event. <laughs> Wait, why are they at two? Oh, they protected it. So we know it's not an NGO front. We know that they can't score it. So we got to think this through because I don't want to goof this up that late into the game. So they can't score it. If we run, we can just play like, what can they res? They can't res this. They can't res this. They can't res this. Tholmong. Oops. Uh, Tholmong. Um, we can boomerang this. This will be a problem because we take a tag, but then we get through and we can steal and we can win the game. I think we just win the game here unless it's like a, something really, really crazy. Uh, two IP block, one battery. Yeah, we got this. Oh, they can't even res two IP block. Yeah, all NGOs are out. Yeah, this has to be game. With one credit, there's nothing they can res. Cheeky Pachinko or something. I don't know. Doesn't make any sense. I think they might have uh, actually gone to uh, deck themselves. So we'll break. We're tagged. We have exactly, well, we have more than enough. We need five credits to steal Bologna. Uh, we'll boomerang this. Oh, we could have drawn for Bravado. Bravado would have been good. What did they call, though? They called Event? Maybe it was important not to have done that. We'll break two subroutines. Continue. Get into the end of your deck where boomerangs every card. It's really strong. To Bologna, we have the money. Okay, cool. Good game. They must have been really flooded. Ooh, had to grind that one out. Man, that all thing guy's dirty good. Credits gained. Credits by click 24 for them, 11 for us. I don't know how it lasted so long. Yeah, it made sense. I feel like that echo chamber was a rough hit. And that's the thing they said right now. They said they had three SSL in their hand after Mulligan. And we saw again, it was like turn 10 and they pushed nothing. They had like three ice and that's it. And that's like a huge sign that they did they did, uh, they did did flood up. And we probably could have just gotten more aggressive against Data Raven, but I always play a bit more, too much of a control game and just kind of try and play safe. And I know we can camp the remote and hopefully you just don't go to time, so. All right, round one, side two. That first game went on for quite a while, uh, and we're now playing a Cronus Protocol complete image deck. This deck was largely net decked. Ooh, David's playing Null, and David, I know what kind of, actually, what Null is he playing? I thought he was playing Freedom for a second. This deck is really fun. It's a complete image deck that's gonna try and kill you. This opening is good enough to keep. We have good eyes for centrals. Hey, hey. Best of luck, have fun. Um, Anarchs, unfortunately, do have in faction, um, I've had worse, which is going to stop our combo, and I'll explain the combo once it shows up. But basically, we're trying to get this really flashy net damage kill. Um, all right. This is the card itself, and the thing with complete image is the first net damage, as long as we know a card in hand, should almost always go through. Uh, we don't really have much to do here. I think time is not going to go in our advantage. I don't know what null is. This actually could be a tag me deck, which might be scary. Um, but we want to ice up our centrals and probably just click for credit, because rising the ice and also getting off snare can be an issue. Uh, what do we want where? I think we can put this on HQ is probably less worrisome. I guess, yeah, whatever. We'll just put this on R&D and click for credit. Uh, if they play an Amakura or Reason up to ice all centrals, we'll put this on the remote. This is not the best ice on, on uh, sorry, on archives. It's not the best ice on remote. It's not the worst either, though. Let's see what kind of null is. I have no read what a null deck could possibly be doing. Um, Nefer? I don't know. Let's we'll just hope that they use their iPad worst for card draw. That's kind of all we're hoping. So this is complete image. We need to make sure that they have a three pointer where the deck is only running three pointers. So basically as soon as they steal an agenda, this is online, which is really fun. Uh, we're running a lot of archive memories as well, just to recur this. And we see restricted card is paperclip, which means no film clip critic, which is good for us. They have access to all their breakers. Black Orchestra actually doesn't deal with either of those pretty well. If I'm not mistaken, it's like six to break all of them. And that doesn't, yeah, six to break. And that doesn't even in theory break all of it. All right, we want some money. We didn't get it. Uh, I think we can just credit, probably throw a Breach Dome. We don't have to do anything too quickly. And they're drawing into something. This actually even could be maybe an Apocalypse deck. And getting a Breach Dome into Archives, Snares and Hands, all that stuff is really important for that. I don't know why you play Null for Apocalypse. It's not necessary. All right. Liberated. That's money. Keiko. It just seems like good stuff so far. This is a fun card for remote. You can jam behind that. Let's draw into Kakugo on a remote. Also, a lot of people play Kakugo on centrals. Um, this deck specifically, I want to put this on a remote just so that when they do steal the agenda, they have a few cards in hand. So the complete image is, is pretty strong. Um, I feel like we might be going a bit too poor here. I don't think we have a reason to ice up archives. We haven't seen Amakua just yet. 
but this remote looks a bit better. We want to draw to a hedge fund IPO and Geofront Rashida, just some economy. Um, just so that we can threaten to resurrect and score an agenda, because we largely cannot. And they can get through everything. Right now, the Sice and Town is the best face check. Uh, we protect our Kakugo from Hippo. Caddy's a slow card. Uh, we have another Kakugo. Can we draw into money? Hokusai in the remote is fine. Uh, I assume they have Stargate. Getting this on Centrals is a bit better, specifically R&D. Um, I don't want to throw something out here. I guess we're just going to play the long game. We really need money because we have five ice and we can res like maybe two for lucky. And they're just going to sit back and get money. Five minutes left plus five since you had issues. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So when it comes to time, it's whoever has the most points. So just jamming out a 5-3 behind a Saisantan might be important. Uh, we also could, like, they haven't played an I've had worse yet. And I think if they hold it, we probably won't be able to kill them before time. Paladin Puemo coming in for free with Keiko, another black orchestra in the bin. There we go, that's money. So let's draw into something to jam. Uh, I guess R&D. We're not doing anything here. Maybe because we're going to time, we should just draw a bit more aggressively. Just to find a, a way out. They have a lot of money. But it's actually kind of hard to get to it. It's click intensive to get to it. They might hit caddy one more time. Oh no, they're taking caddy, so maybe something's going to be installed this turn. Maybe they're going to interact with us. It's a hippo? Okay, so that's... There's a reason why, uh, so if we res the slot machine, they have to break all of it. I think we're actually going to res it. If it eats a hippo, it's fine. It's actually really hard to hippo because they break all of it. We also now have to open notepad.exe to remember every card that they're going to draw because it's really important. And hopefully they hit a snare here and that snare hits an iPad worse. Again, the first net damage we do each turn, if they do hit a snare, we can choose what to kill. So it's Amakua, so I'm glad we asked everything, Devil Charm, Daily Cast. So, oh yeah, this is going to be an Ice Destruction deck, of course, we played a bunch of this before. Amakua, Devil Charm, Daily Cast. So if they want to break all of it to Hippo it, it's pretty expensive. They have to do 3, 6, 9, so I think this usually lives. Fire all, so uh, they only lose 3. We could have used the money. All right, so again, big chance to hit snare. They can always trash the complete image if they hit it. It's a snare, we'll pay. They have no clicks left, we can trash their board. So we can hit the first card. It's an I've had worse, which will draw into everything. I think we want to get rid of that, but it's going to just hit everything, so it doesn't matter. Chivil, Charm, I've had worse. So we know their entire hand. <laughs> Let's make it quick. And they'll trash the snare and take a tag. Okay, so we don't have a lot of money. We have a voter intimidation, which isn't online. Uh, they don't have a lot of money and they have a tag. I think we want to trash some of their stuff. They're going to threaten us. We want to keep at least four for this remote. Uh, we know their whole hand, but complete image isn't going to fire just yet. We're down one. I think we can't afford to trash anything. Maybe we can do credit, credit, trash, liberated. Yeah, that's the best. It still means we can res this stuff and we still threaten snare. They have to clear the tag, likely. They might go ham here. I guess they could have thrown out a card with Black Orchestra so that they could have broke all the slot machine, but then they would have died to snare, so... It's actually really hard to use Nell's ability in this matchup. And this is what they're going to do. They're going to be Devil Charm and Chisel and Null and Amakua and hopefully keep everything down. Uh, continuing to counter ice, so here they're going to trash it. It still costs them six. And they can still not die to snare. And we don't have Neural or any way to do single damage. David's playing aggressively because we're coming to time. Resource, so Lib, Gamble, Stargate. So this is their hand. Oh, plus one. Gamble, Stargate. Ugh. Ugh. Gamble, Stargate. And I think they played this charm. So I think that's their hand. Uh, all broken, fire unbroken. So they lose three, continue to pass. They're going for a single here. We could have really used the money. Another snare would be nice. So this is their hand. That's what's on the top of their deck. They hit a voter intimidation. That's always a fun card. Oh, I, I noticed that you can't see this. And you clear the tag. Uh, that this we'll just put this up here. That'll probably be good enough. We want to track what's in their hand. Gene Splicer is good. This actually can help us win the game. Uh, they don't have a size. And I think we're going to jam this into the remote and just click for credits. Uh, if we go to time, we can always advance, advance, flip this and just put us on game point. Uh, one point might be enough to close on time. In time, you just have to play the agendas, and this technically is an agenda if we score it. They could always run through and steal it. Um, and the, the, there's actually a big chance if they run and face check into the size on it could be straight up lethal, um, just on the basis. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I think they're dead. Oh, GG. GG. Kamino would have killed size on Oh, Kamino wouldn't have killed. Size on actually is going to kill. So they have all the triggers. 
this they can't break it. Wow, this actually does lethal, which, which Kamainu would not have done lethal. And we know one card in hand. I think I think we know the Amakua. So as long as we say Amakua casts and the one unknown. Wait, what's happening? Choose a type. Okay, so uh, a program. And then we choose the damage. Fire and Broken Sense. Use Cronus. So we'll trash the Amakua so that it does two damage. Fire and Broken Subroutines, they're dead. Ooh, came up on time, just quick enough. This can do a cheeky four damage if you know one card in hand. Notepad.exe. That's all we need there. <laughs> Take that. Take that, Kamainu. Um, got him. As long as you have some information, this will do it. Just on time like you guys. Just on time. That's the game, eh? Uh, if they got through here, it would have been bad for them. Admittedly, the Sai uh wouldn't have been that. They had one card in hand, and then we could do an extra damage to the Hokusai. We wouldn't have won, or any... I don't think we would have killed them. We really needed them to face check into this. In theory, Cortex Lock also would have been lethal. Um, there was a lot of sentries that they had into to, uh, to, uh, to uh, respect. What a mad man deck builder, yeah, this is original deck. No, it's not. We, we, uh, we largely net deck this. Um, cool, we got round two starting soon. Uh, we got two more rounds tonight. Thanks for watching.